Welcome back to, well, not Pro Cycling Manager yet, because today's different. Today, we're starting a new adventure, and I'm not doing it alone. Today, I'm starting it with two fellow YouTubers of Pro Cycling Manager. We've got Joe, aka Tim Soski. What's up, guys? And Black War. Hello, hello, hello. With us three, together, we are going to be starting a career mode on Pro Cycling Manager 2019. Now, obviously, that sounds really weird, because how can you make a career mode with three people? It's actually quite simple. On today's episode, we're going to be selecting our squad, and we're going to do so by introducing our own roster. Each of us will have the opportunity to bring forward 9 riders that complete a full team. That will become the team of our career mode. And after that, we go straight into career mode. How does this work? First of all, I will start off with episode 1. After the first episode, you'll have to venture over to Tim Soski's channel for episode 2. Then in the third episode, Black War will take over and bring us forward in those races. And we'll have to build upon each other's success to try and make this the most successful career mode we can possibly do. That's roughly it for the explanation. Let's get started with Black War's part of the team. I'm going to start. The focus of my team was aimed towards Mountain and GC. Therefore, uh, I have chosen one huge leader with a decent co-leader, some domestics to help him, alongside a few sprinters and specialists of time trial. The first pick for the YouTube cycling team is going to be Rafa Maika from Bora Hansgrohe. Uh, I've picked him because he has decent stats all across. Um, he is good, but not too good. And I feel like as a new team, it needs a captain. And I believe Rafa Maika can be this person. To go alongside Rafa Maika, we're going to pick another of his teammates from Bora Hansgrohe. And it's going to be 28-year-old Patrick Conrad. Uh, he has once again, like Rafa Maka, some decent stats. Uh, he could be our potential leader um, when it comes to uh, Healy Classics, mainly um, the Ardennes. He's got good stats in time trial, uh, decent in mountain, could go in a few breakaways if we're looking for uh, an alternate classification in a one-week race. So joining uh, Rafa Maka and the YouTube cycling team is Patrick Conrad. As the third rider joining the team, we're going to have 31-year-old TJ Van Galeren from EF Cycling. Uh, it's a rider that I do like. Uh, I feel has been rather unlucky in his career. Uh, and although he is slightly declining, uh, he is only 31, so he'll bring experience to the table. He'll also be, uh, I believe, the best rider in time trial of the team. So yeah, TJ Van Garen joins us. Also, he'll be there to help uh, Rafa Maka in uh, a GC, potentially. Continuing with the mountain theme, uh, we're going to go with our final mountain domestic. It's going to be 36-year-old. Yes, I know we're pinging young riders there. Luis Leon Sanchez uh, from Astana. Uh, I grew up watching him. I always liked him. And I never had the chance to make a career mode with Luis Leon. So I believe that today is uh, the day. We're now going to move to the sprinters I have chosen. Obviously, they're not going to be the leaders, most likely domestics for the um, leader sprinter that will be chosen uh, later on in the video. We'll start with uh, the 25-year-old South African from NCT, Ryan Gibbons. He's got 74 in sprints. He's basically good everywhere he can get over the hills rather well uh and in case of a, a bunch finish with a, a false flat he could definitely be a, someone to watch out for if he plays uh, his own card he'll also be helped uh by a 32 year old from the team ineos ben swift uh he's been there for quite a while and uh despite a, a bad spell at uae maybe maybe this youtube cycling team is going to be uh, the one to uh, renew his colors so ben swift joins us Joining uh, Ben Swift in the team Ineos is the 32-year-old all-rounder, according to his team, Edvald Boasenhagen. He's basically a god, but a B-Tech one, because he's got mess stats everywhere now. Um, but put him in a breakaway, he can win on every, surf uh, every terrain. So, yeah, and also, I like him, so why not have him in the team? You might think that's the only Norwegian in the team, <laughs> and you're wrong. We've got another one. Tobias Foss from Jumbo Visma, 22 year old. He's the second youngest of my lineup. Uh, a nice prospect for the future. 75 in time troll as his best stat. Uh, in case of a team time troll, he could definitely be one uh, to help our leaders. Finally, we have another rider from a Nordic country or Scandinavia, I believe, with Mikkel Bjerg. From Denmark, 73 time trial. Uh, I, I won't lie to you. When I picked him, I thought he had better stats, but well move. Um, he rides for UAE, I believe. 
And uh, at 21, he has a lot of potential, a lot of time to progress and uh, become a very, very important rider when it comes to uh, to the time trial effort. So yeah, I think that is my lineup. Honestly, really like your lineup because first of all, we've got a good setup for the mountains with Micah. And next to that, you've got some real domestiques for both the sprinting and cobble areas. So that's going to help out both the leaders of Joe and I here. Yeah, I really like your team, Blackwall. Love the inclusion of EBH. We know he hasn't been in his top form the past few seasons, but it would be great to get a few more big wins with him, especially at the Tour de France. A lot of experience in the team so far too, with the likes of Van Garderen and Luis Leon Sanchez already in their 30s, but they can definitely still add something. Good to see a Brit included as well in the form of Ben Swift. Also like the picks of Tobias Foss and Mikael Berg. Both very talented young riders. Okay, that's it for the first part of our squad. Let's continue onwards with Joe Spot. So with Blackwall focusing on the mountains, my main leader was based around the sprints. Of course, though, I have included a bunch of domestiques for the mountains, cobbles and other terrains as well. So the leader of our sprint team is going to be a Colombian. He comes to us from UAE. And no, it isn't Fernando Gaviria. We're going with Sebastian Milano. He's only 25 years old, so plenty of room to hopefully develop a bit further. He started the 20 season very nicely in real life. I think he got a few wins at the Tour of Colombia. And another reason I like this rider is that he's getting much more of a leadership role with us rather than riding for the likes of Gaviria, Philipson and Kristoff at UAE. Okay, so next up, we have a very well-rounded rider in my opinion. He's good on hills as well as cobbles. He's a pretty good sprinter as well. We bring him in from Jumbo Visma and we are going with Timo Rosen. He's still just 26 years old, so another rider that hopefully can improve going forward. So yeah, Timo Rosen is my second pick. Next up, we have another rider who could potentially get involved in our sprint train. However, unlike any of my picks so far, this man is a very good time trialist. Sticking to the theme of pretty young riders, we are going with 24-year-old Frenchman Benjamin Thomas from FDJ. He's well-rounded, which is something I really like in a rider, so hopefully he'll be another good addition. Following that up then, we have another rider that is pretty well-rounded again in the sense that he can get over climbs and is strong on the flatter sections. We're bringing in the Latvian Chris Nielands from Israel Startup Nation. I think he's shown some good potential in his career so far. Unless I'm mistaken, I think he did quite well at Milan San Remo a few years ago. He's good at getting in breakaways as well. Pretty punchy, so looking forward to seeing what Nealands can do. Moving on then, let's take a look at who I've chosen to help out in the mountains. We start with a South African who joins from NTT. He's the youngest rider I've picked so far at just 23 years old. And we're going with Stefan de Bod. Potentially could be one for the future, but that doesn't mean he can't help out right now in the mountains. I think he's got 72 mountain at the moment. Next, staying with the mountain squad, I've gone for 22-year-old Kevin Genier as my second pick from Groupama FDJ. He's not just a climber though, he can TT pretty well, and he's also got a decent kick on him in the final meters. I'm feeling quite hopeful about this guy's potential because if he does develop early on, he could definitely become a strong GC talent for the team. The next addition from me then brings yet more youth to the squad. And this is actually the first British rider I will pick. I'm bringing in the very talented Tom Pidcock, who has already shown what he can do in cyclocross. Not quite as much on the road just yet though, but if Van Der Poel and Van Aert are anything to go by, we can hope Pidcock will become a star of the team in the future. He's punchy, he can sprint, he is decent on cobbles. So yeah, my seventh pick is Tom Pidcock. You can probably tell by now I've tried to focus my selections on younger riders that could potentially be great in the future and that doesn't change here. I'm bringing in my second rider from Jumbo Visma in the form of Pascal Enkorn. Again, he's well-rounded, but for me his strengths are definitely the cobbled classics, which is the area I'd like to see him progress in moving forward. Saying that though, he can definitely contribute already in the sprint leadouts and team time trials. So the final pick from me and this rider is coming from a Conti Pro team. He's French, 26 years old. It is the breakaway king himself, 
Shahal Plane is joining the team. He's just 66 overall, but don't be fooled. The man that can't help but go in every breakaway he's in. I swear he went in every break at the UAE Tour last year. Anyhow, Plane rounds out my picks. It's a team I really like. Uh, I do like the fact that Molan is there. He's still young, but he's going to be fighting for a leading sprinting role, which is uh, something he'd never had the chance to do in like the big scene. Uh, obviously, as I was focused on the mountain side, uh, I'm quite pleased to see someone like Kevin Johnny and the team, or even Stefan Debod. I don't really know much about the, uh, the South African, but uh, he'll be uh, joining Ryan Gibbons in my team. So I, I guess uh, that's some continuity for him. Uh, and yeah, overall, it's a, it's a team I, I do like. Benjamin Thomas, obviously, uh, the, the French national time trial champion, uh, close to my heart. Uh, and the legend himself, Charles Planet, 74 Bauda. What else do you want from a, from a rider, I believe? I like it as well, and it's mainly because I like doing career modes and such with teams that start off with very experienced good riders, and then you kind of have the transition at the end of the season towards the riders that are young and become leaders at that point. And we're definitely going to have that with that squad and potentially with the upcoming names as well. So, guess it's time to start off with my team. My team was mainly focusing on trying to get another leader settled, and that was Cobble. I did not want to go for an all-out Cobble leader that can win everything, because that's going to be boring, in it? Now, what I went for is a rider that has a lot of experience. I decided to pick Hausler because I have really liked him when his career peaked. That's 2009, I think, 2010. When he was riding at Cervelo, honestly, one of the favorite shirts ever was the black Cervelo shirt for me. And I've got one of those hanging in my closet. I've only got two cycling shirts, and yeah, it's something, right? Now, Hausler, he's never really been that good since then, but I still enjoy him riding. And seeing him in the cobble season this year sparked my interest. Therefore, he is my choice with 75 cobble as our cobble leader. What a challenge. Next up is some support for that Cobbles. I'm also going to pick another pretty old rider that had pretty much a one-trick pony deal at the Belgian Championships. Jürgen Rulands. He's going to be our helper with 74 Cobble for Hausler. I genuinely don't really have a connection towards Rulands except for being Belgian. And I like to pull him away from Movistar where he doesn't fit to put him in another team where he doesn't fit either. So, yeah. My next rider is kind of special because everybody knows I've got Vincenzo and Emily as my favorite rider. And since I'm in the habit of splitting families right now, I'm going to go for Antonio Nibali. 72 Mountain, 71 Hill. No, 70 Hill, my bad. Is definitely someone that can help in the mountains and potentially in some very trash races, even go for himself. I've got another climber on my list, Harold Teada. He is from Astana and from Colombia as well. <laughs> 72 Mountain and 71 Hill, and he's going to be a domestique for the climbing and could potentially grow out to be a bit of a climbing leader as well. It depends on the future, of course, and what it holds for this rider. To fill up the team a bit, we also have a trash rider. That's Brendan Rivera. I'm not sure what he's good at. He doesn't know what he's good at. Ineos doesn't know what he's good at. So yeah, guess we don't know it either. My next rider is another helper for the cobble season. And he could also do kind of a bit of barrowing. His name is Andreas Togbro. He's a Dane and is quite a young rider, so has some talent. Will obviously grow into a better rider in the future. For my next rider, we're diving deep into Conti territory. Because I've picked a climber from Colombia. Camargo from Colombia de Tierras. Has 72 mountains, 71 hill. Not a very talented rider. Maybe a talented rider, we just don't know it yet. I've only seen him climb like once in my life, but okay. For my next rider, I'm going to pick a Belgian rider because I'm Belgian and I do want to bring my country to this theme. And that rider is Stan de Wolf. He's got a bit of hill. He's got a bit of sprint. He's got a bit of cobble. He's got a bit of flat. He can pretty much do everything a bit, but not one thing that amazingly. Therefore, he's going to be a domestique in all areas. And that's what I like about the rider. Now, my last and ninth rider on the list is someone from the Netherlands. He is very young and quite talented. He showed himself at the start of this year's season in some of the color races and came close to winning Le Samet. And his name is David Decker. 
70 flat, 72 sprint, and 70 cobble. Young rider, got a bit of potential, and can do well in the future. And that is my list. So I'm a big fan of your selections, Benji. Really like the pick of Heinrich Hausler as our cobbled leader. I think watching Benji win Paris-Roubaix with Hauser is something we can all get on board with. Also got to mention Antonio Nibali. There has to be a Nibali somewhere where Benji is involved. Other than that, some great talents in the team with the likes of Decker, DeWolf and Stockbro. I think Stockbro actually won the Youth Tour of Flanders. So hopefully one day he's good enough to challenge in the full event. And Harold Tejada, not going to lie, I didn't know much about this guy before this season, but he was really good in the Algarve helping out Miguel Angel Lopez. Right, so I do like the team as well. Uh, obviously, Heinrich Ausla, despite being old, um, still has hopefully four good months in him so that he can hold on until April uh, as a, a former German rider. Uh, and he'll be helped by another old guy, Jürgen Rolands. Uh, he moved to Movistar, I didn't understand why. I still don't understand why he's now going to move to YouTube Cycling, but fair enough. Um, nice to see a slight focus on, on South uh, America with the likes of Tejeda, uh, Rivera, and Camargo. Uh, I took notes of all the riders. I wrote Wear Guy next to Camargo because I genuinely do not know him, so hopefully it'll be a good surprise. Uh, I wrote the same thing next to Decker because I still don't know who that is. Uh, obviously, being an Azen, Benji's known for being a, a B-Tech brother, so good to see uh, another B-Tech brother in Antonio <laughs> Nibali. In the <laughs> and, uh, wow! <laughs> and finally, Stan de Wulf, uh, which I I know for uh, having a, an 85 limit on cobbles in like the first ver um, versions of the World GB, so hopefully he can grow to at least 76 uh, before April, so that you can overtake Henry Kausla. But yeah, he's uh, he's good everywhere. As I said, good a bit. Hopefully, uh, he'll be more than good a bit. So right here, you can see a bit of an overview of the team. We've got all areas pretty much covered. We have riders that can do well in the mountains, can do well in the sprints, and can do well in the cobbles. Okay, that's about it. If you want to follow the series, dive into the description of this video, because you'll find two links for the other two channels in there, so you can follow every single episode of this without missing a thing. As said before, first episode is on my channel, the second one will be on Joe's, and the third one will be on Black War, and it will keep on going like that, onwards and onwards. Thank you very much for watching, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. See ya. Cheers, guys.